Hello and welcome to Assignment 5 uh, video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to create forms and reports uh, using Microsoft uh, Access Database Management System. So this is your assignment overview. Uh, you need to start uh, with a file uh, that comes with uh, Assignment 5 files. And this is a database file that you've been working on for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, entering data, creating queries. So uh, this is the uh, file system that you will open. So you will see this file, which, we, which you're looking at, which is that work description file. You'll see some images that you will have to insert in your forms and reports. And this is the database file that you will open. So as you can see, it has all the queries, including the practice queries that you entered as a part of your previous assignment. So the first uh, task for you is to create uh, an employee attendance form that allows you to browse uh, through employee records. And for every employee that, that you see in those records, you should also be able to see his or her timesheet, which is which shows uh, the employee's clock-in date, clock-out date, uh, I mean time, then uh, date work, and also uh, hours worked by, by that particular employee on that a particular date. Now there are some additional requirements and we'll go through those additional requirements after we create the form. Like for example, you need to insert an image, you need to format uh, your uh, form in a certain way, uh, you need to sort records, you need to add an additional custom field that calculates hours worked and so forth. So we'll go uh, through those uh, additional requirements uh, after we create uh, the form. So. But let's start with the very basic. So uh, with a very basic thing, uh, we'll uh, create a foundation uh, for, for this uh, form uh, by creating the form itself. So, so this is how it works. In your database file, you'll go to create. Sorry. So first of all, you will save that file because it doesn't allow you to create anything, so I'll just save it somewhere. So you'll save the database file, so it allows you to create additional uh, elements, and then you will go to Create tab, and in this Create tab, you will just select uh, form design and it will open a blank form uh, in the design view. Okay. Uh, to get started, I will right click and I will enable form header and footer uh, because this is where you can enter, uh, this is how you can organize your information, your controls that appear on the form. And I would like to know that there are certain tabs here uh, that allow you to work with form elements. So this is the format tab uh, that allows you to do formatting to the form like changing colors, changing fills, changing shape outlines and things like that. Uh, for arrangement, you know, we are talking about sorting, sorting data in different ways, but you will spend most of the time in the design view that allows you to add certain uh, controls, okay? So, uh, so we'll we'll get started by working on the on the header of the form. So what we will do, uh, we'll select a form uh, logo, and this is the hourglass that the file that comes with assignment five files. So we'll insert it here. Maybe we'll resize it a little bit to make it bigger. Okay, and then uh, you know here. In the form uh, header, you can also enter the header for your attendance form, which is employee attendance form. So for that, you will just uh, double click on this label area and then enter employee attendance. Okay. Now, for every element that you add to your form, uh, what you will have, you know, once you double click that element, you will open the so-called property sheet. And in this property sheet, you see all the options that you have in terms of uh, adding data and formatting uh, your element. And also uh, here you will see uh, events like what uh, a particular uh, what a particular form element such as label or button will do in case a certain event is applied, such as on click, on double click, on mouse down, mouse up, or when mouse is moved over it. Okay. For now, we're not going to deal with any events. I will just concentrate on the formatting tab. 
the name is self-explanatory. When you look at the formatting uh, tab, you will see all the properties in terms of the appearance or look. So if you ever need to change something in relation to font size, font name, uh, back style, back color, all those things, if you see anything like that, height and width, it's always in format. If you want to change something in relation to data, meaning what kind of data uh, is being displayed in a particular control, here we don't have that because this is not like a data control, this is just a label. If we had a text box, that box then we'll see some data options for, uh, for linking a control to a data source, such as a table, for sorting it. Uh, and then other, you know, means some other uh, properties that may be unique or relevant to this particular control. So when we change appearance, when we change data source, we'll be, we'll be double clicking on the control to go to the property sheet. And in this property sheet, we'll be able to do modifications to the data source and formatting of each element. So here we have our label for the form, uh, which is called the atten uh, employee attendance form. Uh, once, you, uh, once you enter a name, uh, once you enter a name for this form, so you would double click it to see the correct property sheet for the label, it's called label three. So this is the caption. So here we have all this formatting. You can change the properties here in terms of the font size and alignment, or you can just go to home, uh, home tab right here and treat it as if you were in Microsoft Word. So what I will do now, I will just increase the size of this label to 18. That's about right, or maybe looks a bit smaller on that screenshot. So let's go to 16. Uh, yeah, that's about right. You can change uh, alignment to center. It needs to be aligned left. You can uh, change the position by specifying top margin uh, or top padding uh, here uh, in the format. You can change alignment of the text inside this uh, header label uh, by going to, uh, by double clicking on this control and then just specifying a top margin in inches. So let's put uh, 0 0.1 inches to kind of center it in the form. And then you can adjust the size of the form header as well. Okay, so now, now that you have header uh, that looks like form one, uh, we'll continue working on this form. Uh, we'll save this form as employee attendance form. That's what the assignment asks you to do. Okay, so now it's, it shows uh, the name here. So next we're gonna start adding control. Now, the first, uh, the first thing you need to do for this form uh, you need to set the data, where the data comes for the controls to save you some time. So uh, for that, you click on the form, uh, make sure you select uh, the form itself, sorry, uh, the form itself here. And then you need to specify the record source, where the records will come from. And here it gives you options uh, of everything that you have in your database. Uh, you will select the employee table and it will automatically construct the filter or you can think of it as a SQL query that pulls data from those records, okay? Uh, by the way, uh, somewhere in the specifications, it asks you to order by uh, records by employee ID. Here it does order it by employee ID, and then the second uh, ordering criteria is employee hired, so you just delete that. It will be just ordered by employee ID from the uh, employee table, okay? So this is where the data will be pulled. So. What, will you, what you will start doing next, you will start uh, adding uh, all these controls uh, as specified here. You know, you have last name, first name, employee ID. So I'll do some of them. Um, so I'll go to a design view and here you have text boxes and labels and that's what you will need to add. So the first label that we will add is last name. Okay, and then uh, I'll resize it a little bit and then I will add this text box for the last name. Okay, now it says unbound. Uh, so the control source will be last name from the employee form. As you can see, when you move to the form view, it will pull the last name of the employee. I think we have an extra label added here. So let's go to the layout view and delete that extra label. By the way, layout view is somewhere in between the design view and form view. It looks more or less, uh, you know, in the layout view, the form looks like, uh, like a finished form. That's what the user will see. Uh, but it also has some abilities to go to properties and resize things. So uh, some people, a lot of, you know, or a lot of people prefer to work with forms in the layout view. And in the certification exam, they also prefer you, they will explicitly tell you to work with that form in the layout view 
to change, let's say, the label font to bold or something like that. So uh, most likely you'll spend a lot of time in the layout view as well uh, on the exam. So I will continue working in the design view. I'll just add a few uh, uh, other fields. Uh, so uh, what I will do, I will add uh, first name. So this is just our label and I will align it with the last name. Layout view will have more options for alignment. You know, I think it's easier once you know how to align those elements in, in the layout view. And then I will add first name. And it's already added that uh, label for it, so I'll just delete it. And then the control source will be uh, last name. Now, for the US citizen control, uh, it's, remember it's a true, false, or Boolean field. So what I will do uh, I'll add a checkbox right here and then immediately it has a attached label to it okay so so what I will do I will um, you know, instead of resizing the label I will add that US citizen variable and then I will add uh, the text box control right here and I'll delete that assigned label to it. Uh, control source will be that US citizen field. Okay, so you will keep adding those controls uh, one by one so that your uh, top portions look like, like this. And then uh, what I will do, I'll just show you how to add a subform uh, to your. Uh, to add a subform, you need to be in the design view. Uh, I'll just resize a little bit because we don't need the footer. Uh, maybe I'll make the form a bit bigger. And then you select this control, which is your sub form. Okay. And then it will ask you, uh, which data would you like to use for this sub form? It says use existing tables and queries yet. Yeah. Uh, yes. And we need to select the job assignments table, uh, all fields to appear in that sub form. Here it asks you what kind of link you want to have. So the default ones, uh, the, the default view works for us where you'll show job assignment for each record in the employee uh, table. So you hit next and then the name should be job assignment. So this is your sub form. So basically what you have here, you have a form within a form you can resize. Uh, you can use keyboard to move it like one uh, grid item at a time. So here it just pulls information. It also has a footer because it's a separate form, has a header. It pulls information about every employee in the job assignment table. Okay. Um, you can resize it a little bit. I think appearance can be best edited in the uh, layout view where you can resize the form, move it around. Okay. Uh, but I'll go back to the uh, design view because, uh, okay, I'll save those changes. Now in the design view, uh, you need to add one more thing, which is a custom field uh, called hours worked. And here you have an expression, you know, for, uh, for, for that control source because the calculation is based on an expression, okay? So what I will do, I'll just go to the design view and I will add a label hours work. And then I will also add uh, a text box here next to hours work. You can do that as well, like you can uh, see when you add a control box by default, it adds uh, a label so hours work and now it's unbound meaning it's not tied to a particular control source now what we need to do uh, we need to create an expression uh, for it so again if you want to do anything with data then go to data and then for control source select that expression option so here you have all kinds of expression categories and values that you can use in those expressions but uh, the one that we need to do is for working with dates which is date different so the expression that will get data into this uh, text box is as follows equals date 
diff. So that's the function that we're going to use to calculate the, uh, the value. Now, when you start typing, it says, okay, this is, those are the options or arguments that you, that you can have for this option. The first option, the first argument in that function is interval. Uh, so you're going to calculate date difference in terms of what kind of units. So in our case, it will be hours. So we'll put age. Okay. And then the, the date one and day two will be clock in and clock out. Right, so those are the variables from the table. So put it, put them in square brackets. So clock in is the first variable. Clock out is the second variable. And then you'll just close your parentheses for that expression. So this is the expression that will basically, for every employee record, it will subtract uh, clock clock in from clock out okay so when you go to the form view uh, I made a mistake here I guess I added the wrong control source instead of uh, first name so let's see so, uh, it's only some employees that have records in that other table like Davis that's the last name of the employee you see that this employee clocked in at 9 a.m. clocked out at 3 p.m. so hours worked is 6 and then let me go back to the design view. So here's uh, first name, should be, yeah, first name. And then maybe resize the labels a little bit here. Let's see, layer view. Just to make it a bit nicer. Okay, so that's all that you need to do for this form. Uh, again, work in the layout view if you wanna make your form uh, more aligned, if you wanna you know, increase spacing just to make it more appealing, more professional. Maybe resize those elements a little bit, move them around, change their uh, formatting uh, options so that the form looks better. And don't forget to add all those missing controls for the employee form. Uh, all the employee fields should be shown here. Next, I will show you how to create a more complex form for your database called HR form. As you can see from the screenshot, uh, this HR form allows you to browse through employee records, uh, delete those records, uh, add new records, find records, uh, go through records back and forth, and also go to the beginning and to the end of the database or, or specifically the employee table. As you can see here, we have an additional element, which is a tab element. It has two tabs, insurance and compensation. So for every employee that you have here, you can also look up his or her insurance and compensation data. And that's why it's called uh, HR form. To get started, we will use uh, the so-called form wizard to quickly add uh, employee uh, form uh, elements to, to your form. So go to create and then select form wizard and then just add all of those elements from the employee table by pressing this button. So you, when you hit next, uh, the name should be uh, HR form. Okay. So when you click finish, your form appears right here. Now, uh, it's not, uh, this form doesn't look exactly how the layout looks here in the screenshot. So you need to reshuffle all those elements by moving them back and forth. So perhaps uh, uh, the easiest way to do it is to switch to the layout view and uh, uh, rearrange all of those elements here. So employee ID has to go to the top and then a street address and uh, city, state, and zip has to be on the right. So uh, I'll start doing it uh, by uh, resizing uh, the elements here. And then uh, I will move some of them around and then I'll just pause the video and uh, skip all those steps that I did so you can do it on your own. So, um, so yeah, in the layout view, I'm just resizing for now. Uh, then I will move street address right here. And I'll use cursor buttons on my keyboard to make it a bit faster. And then city will go here. So 
I'll let you work on your own, reshuffling re all those elements so they look exactly like on the screenshot. So yeah, I re uh, rearrange and resize all those elements to make it look closer to what you see in the screenshot. Now next we will start adding uh, the insurance and compensation tabs to our form, but before we do that we need to uh, think about uh, the data that, 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 is, that our form is linked to. Okay? So right now uh, we just selected employee table as the data source. However, we also need information from the insurance table and the wage data because the wage data will go into the compensation tab. So what you need to do, you need to edit the SQL statement for, uh, for this form to change the way uh, data is pulled or aggregated. So click right uh, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on this button here on the right and it says you invoke the query builder on the table. So you say, you say yes. So now you have your employee table. This is where you get all the information. Now we need to specify that we need all information about employee, okay? And then we, we also need to add uh, wage data and we also need to add insurance data. So we select those two tables. So here's uh, our ERD model. And then we'll do the same thing. We will select uh, from the all records from the insurance table and we will also select all records from the wage data table. Okay, now when you move to the SQL view, uh, you know, you can look at the data sheet. So right now you see that this is an inner join. So whenever there is a, a overlap between three tables based on employee ID, the information is pulled. That's not what we want. We want information about all employees plus uh, any information that is also available in the insurance table, the wage data table. So it means that instead of joining uh, these two tables based on inner join, we need to do it on the left join, which means all record in the employee table, and then all records uh, in the insurance table that match, and the same thing for wage data, we need to have left join. So all records here in this left part and whatever is matching in the wage data based on employee ID. So when you run it, yeah, you see like this, all in employee information plus whatever is matching in the insurance and provider table. So now uh, we go back to uh, design view. So this is our query. We just uh, you know, so it looks like that's that's what we are, uh, that's what we need for our. So we can uh, click save and then uh, close this query. Yes. And here for this employee ID property, I just change it to employee ID here uh, as the data source because it was ambiguous. It was just employee ID. So we specified that it comes from this specific table called employee. So that will allow us to pull data from the compensation uh, for the compensation tab from the wage data table and for the insurance tab from the insurance. To add uh, those additional tabs, you need to go to the design view and then select this tab control element. You will place it right here uh, on the form. So I'll move it down here. Okay, and I'll just resize it to make it a bit bigger. Okay, so now you need to uh, click uh, one uh, element at a time, and then you can change its formatting and appearance. So you can just uh, dub, uh, you know, double, double click anywhere or just click anywhere in the form and then select page 20 because that's the name of this tab. So make sure page 20 is selected here. And then you need to change uh, the, so index is zero. This is for moving between uh, form elements using tab. So the caption should be insurance. And then for page 21, which is our compensation table, the caption should be uh, compensation. Now in the, in the insurance tab, I'll go to the design view and then in the insurance tab, you will add information from the insurance table, which is employee ID, provider ID and level. So again, I'll go to the design view and I'll quickly select uh, this text box right here. So this comes with a label automatically. So that will be employee ID and then 
the data will come from the insurance table employee ID. Then I will quickly add another text box, which is provider. And then these, the data source will come from the provider in the insurance table. And then I will add the last one which is uh, level of insurance. And this comes from the level column of the insurance table. So we are done with insurance uh, uh, tab. So uh, when we go to the form view, you'll see that as we go through employees some employees have insurance records here so you can also view whatever insurance information they have and i will you know you can switch to compensation here and i will let you do the same thing for compensation uh, it will come from the wage data table so you'll add this, those controls one at a time so what i will show you next i will show you how to add uh, certain control buttons uh, i will move the form footer here so we have more space available uh, on the main form. So how do we add buttons uh, here? Uh, well, first of all, when, you, when you're in design view, make sure this option is on. So when you click here, you can use control wizard to, to go automatically to a wizard for a particular control. So I'll show you how to add first button. Uh, this is the button that you need. This is the button element that you need to add. And as you can see here, we have controls for uh, deleting records, uh, creating records, finding records, going left and right in the table, and then going to the beginning and end. So I'll show you how to create the first control, which is delete control. So you select this button and you draw it here. And then the wizard launches. So that's why we, uh, we specified that we need to have the wizard enabled. So this comes to... Uh, uh, record operations and you select delete record so you hit next and then which picture you can use uh, you know is used for this uh, label you can select your own custom picture or you can select uh, trash can which is the default uh, icon here so you select next and then the name uh, is command 29 you finish it and this is the button so uh, when you're uh, in the form view like once you have a record like that you know, it will ask you if you're sure that you want to delete it. So that's how it will work. So I'll let you find all the all the uh, all the rest all the remaining controls for your form. Now, at the end, when it comes to this form, just uh, add date and time in this format, and uh, so yeah, just uh, select the format that looks right for you and uh, click OK. So here it's adding to the header, so you need to move it down here to the footer and then when it comes the for, to, to the form itself don't forget to add HR logo right here and you can also add a label that says HR form and then you can resize it you can uh, change its alignment and location using the properties tab right here so don't forget to save the form once you're done. And that should be it when it comes to the HR form. Once you're done editing the form and uh, adding all those missing elements, uh, put, uh, you know, just as the assignment says, put uh, all those forms into a category called forms group in the navigation pane. So this is how you can do it. Just select all the forms that you created and then add to group, new group, and the name should be forms group or just forms okay next I will show you how to create uh, employee work report uh, as, as we explained previously the difference between forms and reports is that form is more of an inter interactive element where uh, a user can browse through records update records delete records while a report is a document, it's something that can be printed, sent over email, it's more of a 
current snapshot of, of your data that can be easily shared. So I would say that form is for manipulations, for uh, interactions between users and, and, and data, while reports are just for uh, retrieving information, obtaining a snapshot of the current state uh, of data in the database. Uh, so, so the advantage of forms is that they are more interactive, they have more capabilities for working with data, but the advantage of reports is that they can be easily shared with the user. And a lot of users, they don't want to access data directly. So for example, if you're talking about a senior executive, they just want to report uh, a snapshot and that's all that, that is required on their side. So I'll show you how to create an employee work report that looks something like this. So for every employee, we have uh, hours worked for a particular week and the uh, total hours for that particular employee. And then at the bottom, we have grand total. So meaning the total hours worked for all employees. And here we have date and time inserted into the header and footer of the report. Now we said that before that you can create reports directly from your tables, from, uh, from your database, but instead uh, what we will do, uh, we'll create a query first that pulls the necessary information. It's considered to be a good practice to create reports uh, based on queries rather than the entire database. Because with a query you're creating uh, a subset like a data mart of the entire database so that you don't have to query the entire database each time a report is generated because that will slow down substantially the overall database, uh, especially if it's a big database with many tables and especially if this database is used uh, by many users, then uh, generating reports directly from the database will slow down the system for uh, the rest of the users of the database. So. What we will do first, we'll create uh, a database, uh, I'm sorry, a query that we will subsequently use to generate a report like that. So we'll go to create and then uh, we'll select a query uh, design. In that query, we'll have information from the employee table and our uh, work table. So from the employee table, uh, we need, uh, first of all, uh, employee ID, then we need last name and first name also from the employee table and first name. And then from the wage uh, uh, data table, sorry, hours work table, we need uh, week number uh, we also need hours from the same table. So when you uh, run this query, it will display information about all the employees and all of their hours. So let's save this query as employee work report. And now we're gonna make uh, a report that pulls data from this query, makes it more visual and summarize it for the end user by creating uh, group totals and the overall grand total. So this is how we can do it. Uh, uh, make, so I'll, I'll go ahead and close this query. So make sure this query is selected, then go to create and then select report wizard. So immediately it will understand that you're building the support based on employee work report wizard. So you'll select all of those data points. You hit next. Uh, the grouping uh, should be done uh, by employee, not by hours worked, uh, specifically uh, will be sorted by employee ID. You don't want to add any additional groupings. We don't have any sorting requirements, so we hit next, we select all the defaults, and then just uh, make sure you call it employee work report. So select finish. So this is how it looks like. Um, you know, uh, as you can see, uh, we are in the print view. So uh, as you can see, there's, a, there's additional work needed for making this report uh, more uh, professional. So I think the easiest way to do it is in the layout view. You can resize all the elements at once. So here we can move them a bit. Okay, so in that case, we have more space here. Weeks, we're gonna move it here. And then hours, we're also gonna resize it a little bit. 
and you can also treat it as if it was Microsoft Word so you can just uh, change alignments in those tables okay so so now it looks a bit better uh, so our report looks a bit more professional then go to the design view and once you go to the design view, the button that you need to do most of the remaining things is that group and sort button. So you don't want just to display things, you want to group and do certain calculations based on this group. So make sure that group and sort is selected. And once you select it, it opens this uh, uh, options uh, dialog where you can group. Uh, and, and we already selected grouping by employee ID. And then you just need to select more. And here you can see all those options that you need to have in order to create subtotals for in, you know, each employee and the grand total. So right now, no total is selected, so you need to select which totals you need to have. So first of all, the total is uh, on uh, hours worked, and the function is sum, because you want to sum, uh, uh, sum uh, all the hours for each employee ID. And then you will select grand total, it will be added in the report footer. And then you need subtotals for each of the employees, meaning for each of the group groupings. So you need to show subtotal in group footer right below here. So that's the sum that is added, okay? So now we're gonna add additional labels. You can resize them in the layout view. So for now, we're just gonna do it quickly. Employee total. Now in the format, you will right align it and you will select it in bold. And then uh, in the design view, we'll also add a grand total label for all the employees. And then again, in the format, uh, once we select this label, We'll right align it, we'll select red font, we'll also select red font for the sum, and then we'll put it in bold. And also increase the size of the font here. So let's say we'll increase it to 14. So now when you go to the report view, you see that uh, all this information has been added for employees, individual employees, and the grand total. Again, in the layout view, you can do some manipulations to resize, you know, adjust position of all those labels if that's what you want to do, okay? Now, don't forget to add uh, date and time and I will go to the design view to see where those labels are going. So press OK, so date and time. So now it's at, you can uh, work uh, on those elements by moving them around. And then you don't need time, you just need date. So when you launch report view, you have this date added, so you need to uh, left align it, okay? And then you can do the same thing, like if you wanna add date and time, you can copy and paste it and add it to the footer right here, okay? So once you're done with this report, uh, make sure you add it to a group, so I'll just save it. And then I will add it to a group called uh, new group called reports. So now you're done with the report, you can go ahead, uh, save your database, and then uh, submit this database uh, as your homework submission through Canvas. So that's about it. So make sure you go through. Uh, all the uh, additional requirements in the document file to make sure you haven't missed anything, to make sure everything looks uh, how very close or ideally exactly how uh, the screenshots in the document description file uh, depict the database and its individual elements. So that's the end of our assignment 5 video tutorial.